Hello wonderful people, it is Genevieve and in this video we are going to learn how to paint old metal. And this video is part of a digital art course that I designed as a month-long YouTube series, so it is totally free. And you can definitely choose to only watch this one video if all you care about is how to paint old metal. Or you can take on the challenge of improving our art skills by drawing along with the community every day. And if you want to do that, make sure to check out my website where the full schedule for the entire challenge is going to be. And also make sure to subscribe as well as ring the bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming textures that are going to be part of this course. All you need for this tutorial is some sort of a digital art software and I will be using Procreate on the iPad Pro. But you can definitely use pretty much anything that has layers in it. So Photoshop, Corel Painter, Krita, Affinity Designer. Honestly, most mainstream and not even like that mainstream <laughs> digital art software uh, will do for this tutorial. I will be suggesting just really basic digital art brushes. So basically the one that come with your software, they're definitely going to work. And I will also include a free color palette in the description below, but otherwise you can pick your own colors if that's more what you're into. And if you are watching this video in uh, the course, you also need to set aside, I would say 15 to 25 minutes, depending on whether you are on day 18 or 19 of the program. And with that being said, let's start drawing. So the first thing you will want to do is to create a new canvas. And the size is totally up to you depending on what you're using this illustration for. If you're just practicing, I recommend something like 2000 per 2000 pixels. I also recommend setting your background to a neutral color if you're just practicing. So if you have the color palette, any of the grays on the right hand side are neutral grays. Otherwise you just pick a gray <laughs> that you like. And we're then going to create a few layers. So go ahead and start with the base layer. And this tutorial is going to be split in two. So the first part is going to be about creating the texture and then we're going to go in and add the lights effect. So create another layer on top of this base layer, set it as a clipping mask and rename it to brush. And you're also going to want to change the blending mode to soft light. You're then going to create another layer. This one is also a clipping mask and this one you're going to rename it to scratches. What a clipping mask does is basically Everything that we're going to draw on these two layers is going to stay within the shape of the base layer. And you're also going to want lower the opacity of the scratch layer somewhere around 50%, but we're going to tweak it later. And the first step is to draw a silhouette of the object that you want to paint on your base layer with a kind of bluish type of gray color. And you can use pretty much any brush that you are used to using. Uh, the only thing you want is to have a solid color, so make sure your brush doesn't have too much texture, but you can always use autofill to make sure that you have like a pretty solid shape. And since we're drawing old metal, we're going to add some textures. So start by selecting your brush layer as well as a um, like slightly darker version of your gray, but it's pretty much almost the same. And if you have Procreate, if you go in the industrial section, there's this concrete block brush that can do a pretty good job at doing what we want to do. If you're in a, like in a pinch, you don't have a lot of time, you can definitely use this brush. Otherwise, you're just going to use uh, the brush that you use to, to draw your shape, your silhouette. And you're just going to draw some very simple lines across your object. And at this step, basically all you want is to add some sort of texture. So it, it can be very rough, super scribbly, that's actually better. And all we're doing is we're mimicking, you know, when you have old metal, you can just tell that it's been used. And usually that translates into lines that are in a similar direction. So that's all we're doing here. We're just kind of laying down this basic texture that we're going to smooth out later. And doing it by hand instead of with the textured brush allows us to really follow the form. So in this case, since it's a sphere, I'm drawing some really nice curved lines. You're then going to select a smudge tool. I'm using the stucco brush um, from Procreate, but you can use really any, any smudge tool that you have in your software. That's just the one that I always use no matter the illustration that I'm doing. Because all you want to do at this point is blend those scribbly lines a little bit. So you still have the idea of the texture, but not the idea of it being like a drawing, basically, or a sketch. You just want to have the lines and this idea of like a brushed type of feeling. And don't overthink this step. Just don't, don't be afraid of going back and forth with the 
the paintbrush and the smudge tool until you get a basic texture that looks good but don't spend more than like a minute or two on this really it's, it's not not that uh that precise of a step at all once you have your nice brush texture looking similar to this one go ahead and select a nice bright 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 banana yellow type of color and again if you have procreate you can use a brush that is in touch apps this time it's called um Tatched. here it was in french it was shown but in english it would be tatched i think and you can see it's just this really soft gentle texture with a bunch of little strokes so you can definitely use that otherwise it's super easy to create yourself and that's what we're going to do um, i'm going to show you how to do it so basically you go back to your super basic brush in my case my favorite brush you dry ink brush and you're just drawing a bunch of little lines that are kind of in the same direction of your your brush um brush texture which was darker so definitely don't spend a whole lot of time on this step either all you want to do is give this idea that yes there's this brush texture but it's not just shadows they're also the light that is hitting some of the streaks that were left in the middle and so super easy super quick and you'll also want to use the smudge tool to blend these strings in a little bit but be very careful since they're a bit shorter um, it would be really easy to just completely lose the texture, so you don't want that. You just want to smooth them a little bit while still making sure they are easily noticeable and visible. Cool! So at this point you should have something that starts to look like brushed grey mass. Um, we're gonna add some scratches on it to make it feel even more old, and then we're gonna make it look like metal so go ahead and on your scratch layer with a fairly dark gray color that still has a little bit of blue to it you're just gonna add some little holes and dents and scratches really just things that make it feel like it's been around for a while <laughs> and so there are no rules for this I, I would say the only rule that there is is try to make them look a bit random um, instead of creating a super precise pattern that is you know very regular and structured because that that's going to make it feel less like um old it's going to make it feel more like that's the way it was made at first so yeah and you can go with very scribbly little lines here you don't want anything too too precise or too smooth or too sharp either you just want kind of a, a good in between and you can also go back to your banana yellow type of color and outline some of the holes, some of the dents, and some of the scratch just to make sure that they pop a little bit more. Great, so now that we have this basic texture, we're actually ready to make it look like metal, which is the whole point of this tutorial. And the thing about metal is the first thing you need to ask yourself when you're painting some is how shiny is it? How polished is it? Since we're drawing old metal, it's probably not going to be that shiny. We are going to cover really super shiny metal that almost looks like a mirror in the next tutorial. So if you want to see that, make sure you have subscribed to the channel. It's going to come out later this week. But in the case of old metal, we're just going to add some basic shadows and light and kind of dip our toes into reflections as well. So start by creating another layer on top of everything and you're going to apply it as a coping mask. You're going to rename it to shadows and change the blending mode to multiply. You're then going to create another layer. This one is going to be renamed to lights. It's also going to be a clipping mask if I can get my hand around it. There we go. And you're going to change the blending mode of this one to overlay. You're going to create another layer, also a clipping mask. Of course, this one is going to be renamed to highlights. This is a very important one for metal. And the blending mode of this one is going to be add. And you're gonna create one more final layer. This one is also a clipping mask and you're gonna rename it to ambient. And you're also going to set the blending mode to soft light or color. You can experiment with both. I'm just gonna go with soft light um, for this example. Great, once you have all your layers, go ahead and select the shadows layer as well as a super soft brush. If you have Procreate, go ahead and select the soft brush from the airbrushing panel otherwise just go with any round brush that's like usually the most basic one that comes with any digital art software and you're going to pick a grayish purple for this and all you're doing is you're drawing your general shadow so this one would be 
kind of disregarding the reflections or anything you're really just drawing trying to draw the shadow as if you are drawing something that didn't have any reflection to it so like a rock or or something like that so in the case of my sphere i'm imagining that my light comes from the top left which means my shadows would mostly be on the bottom right like this in a crescent moon shape and one thing that i also recommend that you do is kind of draw um your shadow in a very soft way of course but also on most edges of your your silhouette um <laughs> got me a while, it took me a while but i got there um that's just going to help your piece feel a bit bit more complete it's going to help your your artwork uh, stand out from the background as well and you can use a smudge tool again to just kind of blend in your shadow a little bit uh, that that's sometimes very really helpful another thing that is very helpful is using the same soft brush set to your eraser to erase a very 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 thin line all around your silhouette so that's going to help add even more contrast so we did add the shadow to help add some sort of contrast between the shape and the background but now we also are erasing this light which creates just it just amplifies the contrast basically but make sure that you keep it super super subtle we're then going to move on to our lights so go ahead and select your lights layer as well as a very bright color so you can go back to your banana <laughs> yellow type of color that we used before and when I, I say banana yellow I don't mean like the peel I mean the flesh obviously otherwise it would be way too yellow but uh <laughs> Yeah, and you can also use your super soft brush here because we want to have a light that is very, very diffuse. And you can even smudge it in um, to make sure that it's not like the edges kind of blend in. Because since our, our um, metal is old, it is not as reflective, it's not as shiny, the lights tend to just be super soft and smooth as opposed to something that is very shiny where you really see the edges of the lights and the reflections that's really not what we're after here we want something that is soft smooth and blends in with the rest however since it is metal we are going to add a little bit of highlights so go ahead and on your highlights layer i'm sure you didn't see that coming <laughs> with your same uh, super bright yellow or white and your same soft brush go ahead and add a brighter spot and this one you can very like experiment with it don't don't worry um, you can start over you can see I tried mine like three times and then moved it around and don't be afraid to lower the opacity as well because you do want to feel like there is some sort of a reflection left to the metal but just not too much so it's really finding what works best according to your piece and according to the effect that you want. So that might need a little bit of, um, of testing and of back and forth, but that's, that's normal. That's part of the game. And at this step, you can also go back to your scratches layer and maybe even your brush layer and play with opacity again to make sure that everything blends in in the way that you like and makes sense for the texture that you personally, in this case, are after. And at this point, we're really into like final touches. So go ahead and select your ambient layer. And this is kind of not really something you would do if you're just practicing your texture on a gray background. But if your sphere or your object was in a colored environment, I like to say it's like in a jungle. So I would select like a green and on this layer, still with a super soft brush, you would go and add some, some of the color from the environment on the side of your metal. Because again, this, this old metal is not super reflective, but it would still get a feel of the environment around it. And it would just help your, your piece feel more coherent, coherent, sorry. Especially if you play with the opacity. Uh, you can see here, if I put my background as green, it just feels like the metal is part of the environment around it. But anyway, that's not important for this. That's just a tool that you can keep in your, in your toolbox. Another thing that you can do to help bring your metal as like a part of like a scenario or a scene I should say is to create a layer on like and put it below everything and this one you're going to rename it to drop shadow and you're going to change the blending mode to linear burn or multiply and lower the opacity around 8% and with the same color that you used for your shadows in general you would just draw kind of the shadow that your object would cast 
on on the ground. So again, this is not really something that makes a lot of sense when you're just drawing a sphere on a gray background, but it's still good to practice. And if you're drawing metal in a context, so if you're doing the whole program, that's definitely something that you want to use tomorrow. And that's just going to help situate your, your object in space. So it's a very helpful tip and you see it just takes a few seconds. So there you go. This was how to draw old metal in pretty much any digital art software. If you are following the program, make sure to come back to this video on day 19. So on day 18, it was all about practicing the texture just on the sphere, but on day 19, which would be tomorrow, <laughs> if you're following the schedule, um, it would be drawing the same texture with the same technique, but on an object this time. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel. And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos like this one every week, especially during the month of January, where we're going to cover a total of 13 different textures spread across five teams. So make sure not to miss that and I will see you soon.